Love, Lord, greetings, soul family, my divinity to yours. Welcome and welcome back. Thank you for your clicks and comments, appreciation, participation, for being the bearers of light, torching through your everyday life to improve it and to light up our world. For all that you are doing in any little or large way is incredibly gratified by spirit. Who is watching and guiding and guarding and leading and helping support us all on this beautiful ascension into the golden age? I thank you. Spirit thanks you. Today is the 28th of April, 2024. The vibration reduces to a four, which is the energy of the heart chakra, the center of sacred love, unconditional love, divine sanctuary. And it resonates with the emperor, energy in the major tarot. The emperor energy, which is an Aries energy and ruled by Mars, very tempered energy. It's regal, energetic, ambitious, a powerful and authoritative energy. Brings a lot of discipline in our lives. It's about structure, making home, creating nations, creating life, creating and recreating substance in our life in a very practical way. However, the importance of this energy is leadership, to be an example, to sound and resound equality, fairness. And by doing that correctly, you end up protecting others and you're admired, not just by your people and your family, but by divine energy. You have a very symbolic and structured geometry of energy that anchors firmly to cover and protect, to nurture, to love. It's like the four corners of the world, the four sides of a box, the four walls of a room, the chamber, the different chambers of the heart. Today, we will address, speak of, and participate in a visualization at the end. So I do hope that you stay till the end because what I'm about to show you or help you with will benefit your life in some way. And I will always encourage you to pass this on to help others benefit. It is no good having wisdom or the gift of wisdom. It is like having or wrapping a gift, a present, for someone and you don't give it to them. It's no good keeping it to yourself and for yourself. Wisdom is about sharing and empowering others. And that makes us spiritual leaders. It makes us appreciate the divine. Because that is the intention. If we were given the gift then surely that gift should be passed on. It is the gift of giving. So today I talk about the late Diana, Princess of Wales, engagement ring. A little bit of background. Prince Charles, the then Prince Charles, 
engaged to Lady Diana Spencer on the 6th of February 1981 at Windsor Castle. And they were later married on the 29th of July 1981 at St Paul's Cathedral, London, UK. Diana was presented by Charles a selection of rings to choose from from the then crown jeweller Garrard and it was reported that he himself included in the selection that Sophia cluster because it reminded him of a brooch that his mum and grandmum wore. But later we find out that Diana was inspired by that piece and some reports say that her mum also possessed a ring of Sophia but more so her choice was based on the colour of her eyes. So the cluster is set in 18 carat white gold or the 12 carat intense blue sapphire originally from Ceylon which is now known as Sri Lanka which is in India and it has been reported that the 14 round diamonds that is the halo around this beautiful sapphire comes from the mines in South Africa. So this standout piece of jewellery that became so famous and inspired others as a symbol of love and a choice of marriage, for marriage, by women all over the world, was then passed on to Kate Middleton when Prince William engaged, proposed um, to marry her on the 20th of October 2010 in Kenya. It is also reported that Prince Harry originally inherited this ring and at the time of learning that William was about to propose and thought course they needed a ring so he suggested that would it not be nice to pass on mom's ring and so he gave it to William and that's how Catherine was engaged with the ring they later married on the 29th of April 2011 and tomorrow marks 13 years of anniversary and they married in Westminster Abbey so 29 years later, from one Princess of Wales to the other, this beautiful sapphire cluster with diamonds, very prized, significant, and beautiful piece, went on to Catherine. And you probably ask, why am I speaking of the ring today? Well, there is a reason, and it was inspired by one of our subscribers, one of our family members, who commented recently about an astrologer making mention of this ring, and I too have read comments on different sites that Catherine should not have put that ring on, should not have been wearing that ring, it's probably cursed, etc, etc. So there's a lot of mixed emotions surrounding this ring. I learned that Catherine was engaged to Diana's ring on her wedding day. And at that time, my thoughts were, it must be such an honour to wear a ring of such a beautiful woman. 
and tell out that they share the same title. Princess of Wales. Well now, but at the time Catherine was the Duchess of Cambridge. And then I further thought it must have been very emotional for William at the same time such a great memory to honour his mother and have that so close in his life by seeing that ring on the finger of his bride. And then another thought immediately was I wonder if that ring had actually been cleansed. A very vague thought and I didn't ponder on it for too long and thought well whatever it is bless them on this beautiful journey and I'm sure Diana is with them blessing them and so happy for this brand new marriage. So with this talk about the ring being cursed I strongly disagree and the reason I say that is energetically I don't feel it but to put it into words Diana herself selected this ring to match her eyes the color of her eyes now to me that is a very personal statement in itself of love and beauty and it also personifies such a feminine expression she loved that ring admired that ring that she continued to wear it even after her separation with Charles and to me that signifies much more of a sentiment and expression appreciation and adoration for that piece of jewelry that it went beyond just a marriage right there was a lot of love a lot of closeness and happiness attached to that choice she made that I feel that with all that love of still wearing it through all of the good and the not so good times that she in fact emanated more love into that ring and created a larger aura of femininity, of beauty, of her spirit, her signature of her feminine divine. However, I wish to also say that every possession we own, especially personal items like jewelry and clothing, and has an energetic attachment to it. Our personal energy permeates it, becomes an aura a force field around it and that is passed on to others that come into contact with that ring or take ownership or inherit it or admire it even but it's not negative it's not negative if you own a possession and there is love that goes into that possession. It is only love that will flow. So I want to give you something to think about now. And that is everything that we touch, that we buy, that we have in our homes, in our lives, has an energetic attachment, right? 
So if you buy a pre-owned home, a house, a car, a piece of furniture, you are taking on the energetic signatures of all the owners before that. It's still in that piece of property or possession that you have now. It doesn't stop there. It goes far back to the point of manufacturing and even further with the resources. Every person that handled that item from every resource and material there's an energetic attachment and that is how energy is passed on. So if you walk into a store and you try on a jersey, a jacket, a dress, the one before you that tried it on has left their mark on there, their energetic essence on there. And if that person was in an angry mood, they've left that anger in that or on that item. And you try it on, you have it, it passes on to you. And that is why it is so important to clear everything that you buy, brand new or pre-owned. And how you do that. I will teach you that when we do the visualization of cleansing and purifying Diana's ring. And you will be able to apply that in your life, every day, anywhere, at any time. What is also sad is, a lot of child labour goes into manufacturing these days and poverty stricken people. So can you imagine the pain that goes into whatever is being produced or manufactured? Because they're enslaved under the worst working conditions, a lot of them, with one meal a day, with abuse. So whatever they're doing, they're doing with such great sadness, unhappiness and pain that that goes into the process of manufacturing, production, packaging, logistics and so on. Think about what I'm saying to you. So before we go into the visualisation, I have four questions that I have written down and I have four decks in front, two for Diana and two for Catherine and another two decks that I will ask for additional messages, the Oracle just to determine the energy of this ring. Right. I want to invoke spirit to help us through this so that this is not just my personal perspective. We receive the vibration direct from the divine. Divine Spirit of Light, Mother Father of creation in all universes and multiverses, I request your essence and presence, evoke your energy, invite you to protect and bless me, to guide to God and to help us to determine in this reading the expression of energy on the questions I have or that which you intend for us to have. Thank you. We are discussing the energy surrounding the late Diana, Princess of Wales, engagement ring that was passed on to Prince to Catherine, Princess of Wales. And the purpose of this reading is to put to rest any speculation 
or to identify its truth. Thank you. These two decks are for, Di for Princess Diana and these two for Catherine. At the bottom of this deck is the Sun. After the pre-shuffle, we have the Ace of Wands. I'll just do one more. And the Eight of Wands. It's all positive energy already. So let us begin with question one. Divine Spirit, please show us by revealing the energy and its authenticity of the late Diana, Princess of Wales, engagement ring, when she wore it after marrying and through the years of her life. Can you give us two cards, please? Two messages. Thank you. We have the Four of Cups, and that is today's vibration, Four of Cups. Let us get one more. Right, that card slipped out. Let's have a look. At the bottom I have the High Priestess, which is a lovely energy. Of femininity, intuition, wisdom, higher consciousness. Okay, so we have the Four of Cups, which is very symbolic with energy. Vibration of today, it's a very emotional energy. An energy she contemplated. Spirit says, although she was engaged, a, a part of her contemplated the marriage, whether she wanted to go ahead with it. She was connected. but felt very disconnected. She was searching in herself whether she was making the right decision. But Spirit says, clearly she went ahead with the wedding, saying in herself, to herself, I will give it my all. I will try, I will make this work. There was enough around her that she realized was a distraction, was difficult, but she held on to that hand of faith, that emotion inside her, that she will do everything she can to make this work and learn love and find love and let it grow. And you see in this card, she sits under this tree with the cups behind her. You know, whatever the distractions were, she put it behind her. And she held her faith that she will make this tree grow. She will nurture it from a young plant into this majestic tree and hold on to divine faith and bring it in. And that was her intention. And with the star, she found healing in that. And she herself rose to stardom. She was the star, that bright light in the marriage, in the firm. 
yet she was standing alone, but the star shone bright. She inspired and she fulfilled. She was happy to continue spreading light. So this ring was her courage, was her focus, was her symbol of divine faith. That beauty, she resonated with this energy as being a whole energy. A great amount of hope. She had a lot of hope. And this is how she wore the string, proud, happy. It was her symbol. She felt grounded by this energy. It illuminated her. It was a wish. She intended to make it fulfill her and fulfill others. In the end, or through her journey, it wasn't just about the marriage. It, it was about the union, the connection with everybody, with the world. Like a star shines bright, one star, and people all over the world look at it. And notice it twinkling and that's who she was that's what this ring meant to her thank you spirit also at the bottom of this deck is the Sun We have the death underneath that and the empress so a beautiful woman was transiting that brought the sun and life and happiness to other and transited passed on but she is still the empress there's the morning the sadness after she leaves this world Please reveal to us now the energy that remained in the ring after Diana's passing. So what energetic aura or significance or meaning was left in the ring? Show us the authentic energy, the resonant energy signature energy that remained in the ring after Diana's passing. We have the King of Cups. Another water energy. And we have the Three of Cups that falls down with a lot of other cards the bottom we have the six of cups all right so let's have a look a lot of emotional energy she was a water sign king of cups emotional balance emotional mastery generosity and love from a very higher consciousness a higher level a mastered level, a regal level, surmounting anything lower and rising higher than that. A celebration, a happiness, a joy, a gathering. This energy was left with all of these qualities the joys, the happiness, more joy and happiness. Celebrations. Incredible.
incredible balance, high balance. So there's nothing untoward that was passed on in that ring from any sadness. She surmounted all of that. She grew larger than her problems. It did not identify. It did not give her the identity that perhaps some of us in the world had come to believe. Yes, she went through difficulty, she went through pain, she went through her challenges, but she did not let that tone her life. That was her personal issues. But when she left, she left behind love, only love. And it's so strange that we talk about that because her life began with a ring and just before she died, it was said that she was given another ring. So whether that is valid or not, but there was another ring given to her. And again, as a symbol of whether it was love on an intimate level or a friendship or a gesture or a gift, but there was another ring. which is all about gifting and giving and sharing and joy and happiness. And what this also shows to me is how it's passed on from one generation to the next. So now it will be passing on to another generation. From Diana to Catherine and possibly to Catherine's children. One of the children. And that is the purpose of my visualisation today of the clearing. Is to purify that ring. So it doesn't bear a signature of these speculations. Thank you, Spirit. We start with two questions for Catherine. At the bottom was the Two of Chalices, which is the Two of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, and the Ace of Pentacles. So all happy cards. All prosperous cards, even the two of pentacles. So lots of joy and happiness. So Catherine received this with all of this beautiful energy. Divine Spirit, show us by revealing the energy of the ring when Princess Catherine, Princess of Wales, Catherine received it when William proposed. Show us, please. We have three cards. We have the Knight of Wands, the King of Swords, and we have the Five of Pentacles. It was a sudden decision to pass this ring on. King of Swords. Knight of Wands. That's an earth energy. That feels like Harry passing it on to William. The ring was passed on to William. Given to William, if that is correct. For him to pass it on. And with the five of pentacles. It's not looking very grand. This is a very sad passing on of the ring. Not that there's residue energy from Diana. We see how that ring was left. So what took place afterwards when this ring was happily given to 
Sir William. Was he now having doubts about whether he should or shouldn't marry her? So he was having doubts whether he was making the right decision to marry her, whether she's the one for him. Mm. This is what this is saying. Am I making the right decision? Is she the one I want for the rest of my life? Is she the one I want to be with? He was worried about this. So there was a lot of mental swaying of thought, of concern. With this pentacle so high up, it played on his mind. It was constantly circling his mind whether this choice would be the choice, the prize, the wealth in his life, that goodness that he was looking for. Before I move to the next question, I want to ask a little bit about this Five of Pentacles. We have the Hanged Man. So it is definitely a lot of what ifs and buts went into this decision. A lot of what ifs and buts went into this decision. Is he making the right? He was contemplating and swaying back and forth with this whole concept. whether he wants her to be his wife. So that's where it started. That is what changed the energy of this, this engagement ring, is the what ifs and the reluctancy, the contemplation. Six is the lovers. Yes, the lovers. Was she the love of his life? Was she the... Look at the candle. Oh my goodness, look at the candle. Can you see what happened? This candle just split in the centre, if you can see it. And the flame is out. And there's a lot of candles still to burn. A lot of wax. So this is where it started. He changed the energetic dynamic of that bond even before he could enjoy it. You see, with the six of, with the lovers and the five of pentacles, there's a five and there's a six. You see, this is the problem. Distance already. And all this hanging and trying to figure it out. So was he in his, not in his headspace? At the bottom is the king of chalices, which is the king of cups, the future king. Can you see that? And the two of swords. So that's two different directions, not seeing things properly. Oh dear. Okay, so now we've determined exactly where the issue is. And you've got 15, which is the devil. 
Am I right? Yes, it's the devil. This is the devil card. We've got the four of wands. So this, this union, this structure, today is a four, right? We have the four of pentacles. We have So this union was actioned. This relationship or marriage or way forward was not action on positive energy. It was an addiction energy, um, you know, kind of, um, all right, um, for the sake of doing it, I'll just be addicted to it and let it go through. I need to get married and um, I've got, I'm getting older. You know, there's so much of pressure probably from the palace, from his grandmother, that he needs to get married. So there was, in the end, this obsession in his mind um, or taste for, all right, let's do this. So this marriage was not based on pure, genuine love. And you might think Charles was very similar. But yet Diana succeeded with something, didn't she? And you know why? Because she held a very high vibration. There's a cup that's there that's supported by the divine. There's a star that's there that's supported by the divine. She rose. Look at the hair. That darkness that she held on her head throughout her marriage and her life. But she rose above that. And she allowed life to flow through. And that is how important it is in our lives, who we are, what we do, how we do things. Because we send off the energy into the next, into the next, and the next, and the next. And it just snowballs. So for the sake of, th of the crown and getting married... That's what he did, you see? But he was worried, having a discussion with a family member or a brother. Am I making the right choice with the Two of Swords? All right. And my last question is, Please reveal the energy of the ring now, today, in its current vibration. What is the energy that sits in the ring now that is in the auric of the ring? The Ten of Wands, oppression, it's a weight, it's a burden, it is heavy, it is difficult. That is what's sitting in this ring now. It's painful. Too many, too many. Let me do that again. Well, it's showing us how heavy this is. How much of a load it is. It's as if it just wants to fall off his back and relieve him. It's too much of a responsibility. It was complex. It was a burnout energy. There's so many coming through, but I'm taking the top one. Let's have a look and see. The bottom of the deck is the king of the knight, sorry, of swords, the knight of swords. Oh, look at that. We have the tower. Mm. An ending, a sudden ending. Very, very sudden, swift, cutting off, ruthless, brutal ending. 
Hmm. So we can see where the problem is. So the card I intended to pick was the one that fell out first, which is the Five of Cups. Sadness. This ring is sitting with a lot of sadness, a lot of grief, regret, emotional upheaval, distress in every way, heartache, heartbreak. Ten and five. That burden is now. We have the Queen of Cups. Look at that. This is Catherine. And the Nine of Wands. She, she tried. She really tried to hold it together, to keep it together. It was her test of faith. She was put through so many different challenges and she was strong and faithful and tried her best to do it right and make it work. Hmm. But here it is, a burden and a great loss and sadness, a great regret on both parties. This is what the energy is sitting at now. So the ring is now sitting with energy that is not positive to be passed on to the next person, next the child, whoever is inheriting this ring. There's Catherine telling us that. So this is how. It brings us now to the cleaning, the cleansing. If I go ahead from this deck, at the bottom is the marriage card and change. And I want to share with you that I did the calculation of Diana's wedding day and Catherine's wedding day. So Diana's wedding day was a nine, which was about change, ending of a cycle. And Catherine's was a 10, which was a new cycle. So clearly a marriage that changed and brought poverty into another cycle. The 37 was reduced to the 10 when I worked out Catherine's wedding date. It was 29, 4, 2011, 33 plus 4 was 37 before it reduced to the 10. And of course, a one for a new chapter, a new cycle. So this is what happened. A lot of things have changed. In closing this reading, can you help us, adjudication, to understand what is going on? Give me one more, please. Concern. We have a 3 and a 33. There was problems, lots of problems, lots of thinking and overthinking, and things had to change. Look at this at the bottom. Bad health. Something ended. She ended. There's another 3 here. Despair, sadness, pain, oust, lost, feeling helpless. There's the 10 of the 37, a different journey. So there was a lot of trying to work this out, put it together. In the end, it was bad for everybody's health, for her health. At the 
bottom of this deck is bouquet, which is a nine, symbolic of today's energy as well. The closing of the cycle. For a new chapter, a new book. This is Diana, closing off a cycle for a new chapter, a new book. For new clouds. For new clouds, hoping that things would work out, but it didn't seem that way. So this is how Catherine's life had started on this confusion and, and clarity and anxiety about whether this decision is, is the right one. Bring me two messages, please. In closing, thank you. Bottom is 10, scythe, cutting off, cutting off, ending, severing, yes, the tree, it's over, it fell apart, the family has fallen, energy has fallen, right, so what we have here, anchor, but that's not what we're taking, we're taking what's upright, and look at the card that falls out, the ring, The ring, a garden, and the bear. The bear is Harry that passed this ring on in happiness and joy. There's the garden, blooming and blossoming. This is a gathering. Can you see? There's a table with people. There's some kind of a gathering here, like a wedding. It was passed on for a wedding. This ring was given to William to marry his bride. It's a promise of commitment, partnership. Right, for a new cycle, did we not say a new cycle? A new contract. So it was given by Harry, if he owned it, passed on. With love. He didn't even think at the time about him keeping it for his bride. He passed it on. You know, with love, like a brother bear, cuddly and fuzzy, yet he was the younger one. Let me pass it on. It's the right thing to do. It's mom's ring and how lovely for an elder brother to have it. You know, he, he probably felt that he's deserving of it, being the firstborn. And, and has right to it. So he didn't give it much thought, happily gave it away and said, go and marry your bride. Propose to her and marry her. Mm. We have anchor though. That I, I did. I showed it to you, but we're not taking it again. This was the anchor of Harry in a previous reading. Rescuing something and anchoring it. Bringing something to safety. To balance into um, a stability. So I leave it there in terms of the reading, but I do ask you now to join me As we begin very quickly to cleanse and purify this ring, you may close your eyes while I clear the energy. And you can take this energy in and allow yourself to become calm and relaxed. Do not focus on this reading. Be conscious of yourself, your energy, calling your guides and guardians, your teams of divine beings to encapsulate and protect you and as you begin to breathe in and out white light do enjoy the toning to clear your energy 
and raise your vibration. Breathing in and out, very gently, but deeply relaxing and calming your mind, your body, very cognizant of your vibration, of your space, the beat of your heart, and a very comforting stillness. With me, send the intention of I, you take your name. Ask my guides and guardians of light that are present with the overseeing Mother, Father, Creator to please help us, each one that is joining and uniting in heart, mind and love from wherever we are in this world for the common goal of clearing, cleansing and purifying and blessing this beautiful 12 carat sapphire blue with 14 diamonds as a halo and this cluster set in white gold that was formerly the engagement ring of the late Diana, Princess of Wales, and then passed on to Catherine, the wife of her eldest son, Prince William, whose current title is Princess of Wales. And we ask that you direct our energy for the highest and greatest good for this purpose. Thank you. From your heart, begin to feel a beautiful ball of white light as you breathe it in from the universe drawing it into your body from the crown, third eye, your throat, into your heart. It forms, it manifests this beautiful orb of white light. And inside this orb becomes a little bit more transparent and lighter, very misty. And you begin to see manifest in there a little bit of gold light from your heart centre, the divine unconditional love light. That little dots, it is shimmering and giving this orb of white light a new vibration, a new currency, a new potency. luminosity and it feels beautiful. I ask you now to expand this energy from your heart by bringing into your vision a mine in Ceylon, Sri Lanka. It is not important exactly where this is geographically located in your mind. You set the intention for the energy to travel to this mine and to clear all the pain and hardship from every worker that 
worked so hard and long hours under the worst conditions or difficult conditions that mined this particular precious stone. And from there, you send love to them and say thank you. And we bless you in love and light. And we take this beautiful sapphire stone in our vision, in our hand. And we look at it and we see it glowing bright and free of that residue. And it is now reached the jeweler, the crown jeweler. And the diamonds, you see in a little saucer, this gemstone, this beautiful, brilliant sapphire, and these 14 round diamonds that are selected to make this ring and the white gold nugget and send light into it to cleanse and purify it together that from wherever it originates and all the hands that passed it, touched it, the emotions that it has felt, it has endured and any difficulty through this mining Processing and logistics process is now cleansed. And we say in love and light we release any energetic attachment and we dissolve it and purify it in light and see these pieces glowing and glistening in light, in love, purified. And now in your vision, the jeweler is busy working with all of this together and has produced this beautiful design, the ring, the final product. And bring it into your vision and look at it. It is majestic. It is gorgeous. It is like an artifact. A blessing from heaven and fill it with light and cleanse it from the final production process and all the hours that went into it and the joys that went into it designing it and manufacturing it and producing it and now it's part of this incredible exquisite selection for purchase and here is Diana looking at this selection and her spectacle and see that love and joy in her excited she tries it on and realizes oh dear isn't this gorgeous it matches my eyes and this has set her off with the decision that this is the one for me and I love it and she's delighted she's excited she has a piece that personifies her beauty her natural beauty and her heart flows into it and that is the essence of the true authenticity of this ring love, joy, happiness and celebration. Yes, for a, a purpose, a higher purpose. But that is the original aesthetic vibration of this ring. And she wears it throughout her life until the end and it is passed on to Catherine. And of course, she too, happy and joyous and honoured and excited to be wearing the ring of such a beautiful woman 
one that she has heard of, has read about, has seen pictures of. She's marrying the son, the eldest son. So it is exciting. And now that comes to pass. And here we are now with this ring. Let us now clear with light, saying to the divine and our guides, we now intensify this clearing to purify it for any and all pain, blockage or challenge that is attached to this ring from the time that Catherine has received it to wear it and during all of the times that she has we cleanse and purify it now and see light flowing into it and clearing all of this shady shadowy dark energy of any type of emotion that is not of higher resonance and immediately it's uplifted and it dissipates and what are you left with this beautiful ornamental sacred piece of jewelry and it sits on a beautiful table in a box in a stand on a stand with some lights around adorning it and shining more light exuding this vibrance and brilliance of its design. It's cut, it's carrot, it's clarity, the dignity, its spirit, its femininity. And we ask the divine now to bless it and protect it with an aura of divine gold energy. That when it is passed on, and the one that inherits it, it will be a ring as a symbol of unconditional love and joy and happiness for the wearer, for the owner. And we give thanks for that. We thank the Divine and your guides and guardians and all those that have worked hard to bring this exquisite piece together. Thank you very gently as you breathe in and out. Open your eyes to a brand new moment. Bringing your consciousness back knowing that you have been an active and energetic participant in a beautiful clearing that will bring love for generations to come. And I personally thank you for being part of this. I also say to you that you may use this technique in your homes, on your possessions, existing purchases, new purchases. To cleanse and purify very quickly with white light, you were in the store and you take something off the hanger. Before you touch it, send white light to cleanse and purify it of all its lower energies and vibrations and then you may try it on. And when you're done, you do exactly the same. You cleanse and purify it and you leave it behind if you do not wish to purchase it. So the next person that picks it up will not be attached to your energy. And you to theirs. You can do this with your food, your shopping, absolutely anything. 
because remember, a lot of what is being manufactured now is also receiving programming. So detach all of those lower vibrations. Beautiful hearts, souls, family, live in love and be of light. Togetherness and the wellness of divine oneness in foreverness. I love you, I thank you and I bless you till next.